23rd Century Equipment. And Angelo D'Ambrosia. And in uh, this edition of Recipe for Success, we're going to be making a horchata Italian water ice. So in our recipe success series that we've been doing lately, we're trying to teach customers about how to capitalize on certain cultures and certain demographics. Ra obviously your, your mangoes, your cherries, your blue raspberries, those are going to be your hot flavors no matter what a nationality or culture somebody is. But there are some flavors that really, really uh, uh, stay in the lane of certain cultures and, and you can capitalize and leverage on your possible demographics in your area by selling these flavors. You have to recognize who's in your market and what type of flavors they're used to and what type of flavors they, they look for. Uh, sure, if you have the hot buns that everybody likes, they'll buy them. But if you have flavors that uh, assimilate to a certain culture and you sell those, horchata. Horchata is a, it's a sweet Mexican drink, right? It's made by combining white rice and cinnamon sticks. And what happens is they, they sit in water overnight and then that, 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 that product is, is flavored with vanilla and sugar and cinnamon and you get a really, really sweet drink. Um, and the Mexican culture and the Spanish culture really understand and know and, and love horchata. Uh, frankly, it's a great, great flavor and it mixes well with ice creams and desserts. So to make an Italian ice out of it is a no-brainer. Um, it, it's got a really sweet flavor. It's got a cinnamon un aftertaste and undertone. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great to mix with alcohol. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to make a horchata water ice basis. If you're in an area that has a, a large Mexican or Spanish contingent of population, put horchata on your menu and watch the sales just, just blow up. Um, we're going to use a horchata as a very simple recipe. You can actually already buy it in a base. So we got 64 ounces of a horchata base. Now what is a water ice base? A water ice base has a mixture of flavoring, uh, it's, it has some sugar in it, it has some stabilizer in it. It has some, uh, some uh, emulsifiers in it. It has all this ingredients in it, in a base, right? So we're going to use full 64 ounces of product in there. And I can actually smell that. It's so good. Um, water ice as a whole, or Italian ice, all it is is water, sugar, stabilizer, flavoring. That's it, really. You might have some citric acid and some flavors, um, but that's really the main ingredients in it. So a base has flavoring, has sugar, has stabilizer in it. So we're gonna use 64 ounces of base. We have to use a little bit more base. We're also gonna add eight, eight ounces of stabilizer, a liquid stabilizer we're gonna pour in there. A stabilizer helps slow the separation process in an Italian ice. An Italian ice is a mixture of ice crystals and flavor. And ideally those flavors inside those ice crystals. Well, when the ice sits, the flavor starts to separate and go to the bottom and the ice rises to the top. Stabilizer slows that process, allows the ice to remain flavorful and smooth and creamy. We're also gonna put about a pound and a half of sugar in here. If you want it sweeter, you can put some more sugar. You want it less sweet, you can put some less sugar. And if you, you look at this, we have a very um, thick kind of syrup product. And it's never good to just dump dry sugar into your machine. Because what's gonna happen is that sugar is gonna wear the blades and wear the parts of the machine that much quicker. So what we like to do is really kind of stir this up and get a solution that we pour in the machine. Also, it freezes better. You know, if we start to freeze and the sugar's not incorporated or it's at the bottom of our machine, it's not gonna be as consistent a finished product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water to the, to the tub here. And that allows us just to uh, blend and dissolve the sugar that much easier. Loosens we, everything up. Yeah, we don't have to measure the water because we're going to end up having about 12 quarts of product in here. So as long as we're not getting over 12 quarts, we're fine. I like to use a clear container so I can see what I'm mixing. I can make sure there's no residue around the bottom. And I like a square container because I like to hear that banging of the, of the whip. It makes me feel like I'm doing something. 